Hi guys, uh, welcome today. It's just me. Um, if you can't hear me, or if there's any difficulty in voice or anything at all, do tell me so I can fix that immediately. Um, I will, from time to time, keep looking at my screen, which is down here. So don't mind if I look down here uh, once in a while. It's just me today. Um, Sarah and Alex are traveling to Perth for, um, I just gave thumbs up to Alex. She came here to tell me everything is fine, uh, which is good. Um, Sarah and Alex are traveling to Perth for, um, for a trade show, uh, which is quite cool. Um, and we're looking forward to it. Um, so it's just me here. Um, I'll quickly give you guys a rundown on what's happening today. I feel like today is a catch up from, um, from the last times as well, because we skipped one. Unfortunately, uh, we, things came up and um, we couldn't action the webinar uh, a couple of weeks ago, but we did do the survey, which was really handy. And I'll bring that up today as well. Um, so I'll quickly give you guys a rundown on what's happening today. So um, I'll just start with uh, a couple of questions that we've received um, for this particular webinar. So I can address that immediately. Um, I've, I'll also address a couple of questions that come up quite regularly for um, some of the artists. Um, and from there, I will go to um, the feedback from the art fair survey that we had we put uh, in last week for you guys to fill in. Um, some interesting um, points have come from there and it would also be a good uh, time to explain sort of give you an idea of why we asked that. Um, then we will, uh, then I'll take some time to um, address some of the misconceptions um, that we realized um, that uh, they are about Blowthumb as a service and as a platform. Um, some of them were also in, um, they came from uh, the artist survey that we did uh, last year. We'd address some of the points and we've actioned some of the feedback that we got from that, but these are some of the points that I think it would be good to just bring up and talk about them. Um, <laughs> and I've gone through and picked the most um, most common questions that come up regularly and not all of them are positive, but I will uh, brave up and answer all of them um, right here. Uh, and once we finish that, I will um, talk about a few new features um, you might have gotten a little bit of a sneak peek into one of them. Um, that is just um, one part of it. Uh, a few good things are coming. I'll try, I'll try and go in as much detail as I possibly can. Um, and then I'll move on to a few other topics. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our new followers. Uh, sorry, the emails that go out to new followers. Um, the collector sale that we're having... Um, uh late, late this later this year and then we'll also talk about our new gallery space which is really exciting um and i'll just give you a rundown of a couple of small things um and we'll finish so i'll start with the questions in the meantime while i'm addressing these ones if you have more questions do put them in the comments so between these sections i'll just go through and i'll address all of them um it will be this good that way um, and FII, Melbourne is really dark, depressing and cold. Um, I was wearing these gloves that I've just taken off because uh, it's not a good look. Um, <laughs> cool. I'll just go into the questions. So yesterday, um, and I think this is a pretty common question that comes up, is um, about the feature add to cart. So I'll just take a minute and just uh, answer the question and also talk about the feature itself and how you should look at it. Um, so the question that I, uh, we got from Marion was how long do artworks stay in cart when someone adds something to their cart? Um, the answer to that is indefinitely. Um, they stay, um, they stay in, uh, their cart indefinitely until they remove it. Um, so, or they, uh, complete, they don't sign in, um, to their account for three months, then the account gets put on hold, um, and then that is removed as well. But if they're active, then that stays uh, in their card. Um, now, I know there's a lot of uh, discussion going on about this feature. Um, the next round of release that we'll have about, uh, about your dashboard, it will also have, um, in time, it will also have 
uh, an artwork level detail so you can actually see which artwork is being added to cart and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but just about add to cart, I think it's important to understand how people use it because we see clients use it quite often and sometimes it might be difficult uh, to visualize how people are actually using it, even for us, because different people use it differently. Um, we have we do have um, a way to shortlist artworks, which is favoriting the artworks, which is likes. Um, and add to cart is also a way that people use sometimes to just shortlist artworks because sometimes have um, a thing against signing up and creating new an account um, so they don't create an account that means they can't favorite or like an artwork so they use add to cart as a shortlisting um, a way to shortlist artwork so they would just add a bunch of things to their cart go to their checkout see what fits what what doesn't come back remove some and go through the purchase or sometimes uh, they do that and then they change the account or create a different account or change the computer or if they were on their phone they would come on to a different account so that original session that they had that would just completely stay inactive for ages and ages and they will just go through to a different account so i'm just giving you different possibilities on how people use it so when you see at the cart it's not unfortunately it's not always going to be um that you will get a sale uh, it might just be someone shortlisting an artwork it could be another artist trying testing how this function works it might be someone which ha who has no intention to actually purchase an artwork, they're trying something. But most likely, in most of the cases, how you should see the interaction with Add to Cart is a very high level intent of shortlisting your artwork. So whatever, whatever the project this particular person has, your artwork, your that particular listing has made it into that shortlist which is always a positive even though even if it doesn't go um through even if the sale doesn't take place it's still a positive uh, and the way we built the popularity system add to cart has a pretty significant effect on the popularity of the artwork as well um so if a particular piece of art gets uh, a few add to carts it rises up in popularity as well so it's always a positive unfortunately it might not always um, land you a sale, but in most of the cases, uh, it's a good thing. Um, cool. Uh, if you guys have any other questions um, about this, just put that in the comments and I'll come back to it once I finish uh, with this. Um, also, while I'm on this topic, I know uh, I saw that Robin had put in the how you can actually see which one, which artworks of yours are in the cut. That's really cool. Um, you should try that. It's a good way to see um, which artworks are in cart. Uh, I've seen some. <laughs> I've seen some artists adding all of their artworks to cart um, to see which one shows in two carts. Um, that is a long way of doing it, um, but you can just favorite all of them, and when you go to my favorites, you'll be able to see, which is a pretty cool way. Um, but soon you won't have to do that. Um, cool. I will. Uh, so that was one question that, that I received from Marion yesterday. Um, I'll just quickly address a few points from the art fair feedback from the art fair um, uh, survey that we did a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and just a gist of the whole thing is um, the main, most of the artists, and I'm summarizing here, most of the artists did not have, they had a, a good experience in terms of exposure but they did not have a very good experience in terms of sales. And that was due to a few different points. That was a, there were not an, a lot of number of sales and sometimes there were high commissions involved. Um, and sometimes even if there were no commissions, the sales and the profit itself was weighed down by the transport costs and other small costs involved and all that kind of stuff. Um, so this was the main gist of the whole thing. Uh, a lot of artists do it for exposure. A lot of artists do it so that they can be seen and they can then eventually um, be represented by other art galleries um, and just sort of get a following and get their name out there. Um, and the reason we asked all that um, a couple of weeks ago is mostly to get an idea of how important that part uh, of local art fairs, local art uh, markets, um, other art fair is a pretty big thing and it's a pretty, well, 
expensive thing. So that wasn't really a part of the question, but it should have been more clear. But th the reason why we wanted to know was how important and how significant is this a part of your art practice? Because if it is something that most of our artists are regularly participating in and they're facing particular roadblocks, then we can actually do something about it um, to support and, you know, just help in that kind of way. Our intention wasn't to get involved and for you to, you know, to take commission and all that kind of stuff. Like that wasn't a part of it. Um, the team here uh, at Boitham is really very small. So the idea, the main idea behind it was if there was anything involved where we could do something in terms of promoting or building some sort of technology a little bit that, that could help. Um, uh, that was that, that was the main goal of the survey. Um, so we got about, I think, 60 odd responses from that, uh, which is pretty good. Um, but we'll wait for a couple of more weeks and see um, and collate all that data and then the team can go through it and we'll come up with ideas. Um, and I'll share that with you guys once we get there. Um, cool. I'll just quickly check the questions. Uh, Marion's asking, is the graph showing add to cart up to date? I noticed I had to add it yesterday, but they're not showing up on artworks themselves. Um, add to cart graph is up to date. Uh, it depends on, like I said, like if someone has removed those uh, items from the cart, they would definitely disappear. Um, and also right now you can't see which artwork exactly it is. Um, so if someone wasn't logged in and they've added something to cart and then they logged in and then they added it again to cart, that might differ uh, if, they've used, if they've used different devices. Um, so just give it a day and you know, if it disappears, it will be uniform um, throughout. Uh, Monica is asking, wouldn't it be great to know which artwork is in card? One could say reduce the price a bit to possibly encourage a sale. I'm thinking along the lines of how your stats show how it helps regarding sold. Um, Monica, we just uh, I was just covering that, that soon you will be able to know which one uh, is in card, but reducing the pricing is in the ideal way, um, is in the ideal way to go about converting a sale. Um, that's the idea that we have to find a way where we don't have to actually discount the artworks to still get the sale because not everyone is looking for a cheaper price. Uh, sometimes people have other concerns, which we might not know. So the idea is to find those things. And obviously like if discount is the last part and we know it, or if they ask, then we can go in that direction. Cool. Um, just from the feed, uh, just from the um, last year's artists away, there were a few misconceptions, questions, and the most common grievances that came up. I'm going to address those. Um, and it, it, most of you guys who are regular um, on Blue Thumb, you might not have this question, but I still want to uh, put this out in this in the webinar. So if anyone new is watching it at any point of time, um, they can jump in and listen to this. Um, one of the things that came up, and sometimes artists who've had their first sale, they ask this question, why am I paying for shipping? Um, at no point does artist, any artist, at any point, point in time, pay for shipping. Shipping is included in the total price that you see, and it is allocated in a separate amount where no commission is calculated. Um, so we don't take any money out of it. And this is paid by the client. So we use this uh this particular allocation to pay for shipping this doesn't come out of your payout for example if you when you're putting an artwork and you put in thousand dollars hundred dollars will be added on top of that so you will still receive your part of the thousand dollars that you've um put in that additional hundred dollars has no effect on your payouts at all so i just wanted to put it out there that at no point does an artist pay for shipping at all even for returns we cover that. Uh, even if you're refunding the buyer in full, we take that um, loss completely. So the buyer is not paying for shipping. The artist is not paying for shipping. It's uh, in case of the return, it's us paying for shipping. Another question that came up uh, recently as well is: um, Are featured artists paying a different commission, a more or less commission? Um, featured artists don't pay more or less commission. They pay the same amount of commission as um, 
any other artists do. Um, questions around how feature artists are selected is quite common as well. I just wanted to say that there's no, um, artists cannot uh, request to be featured and there's no way uh, for anyone to suggest, apart from the team at Blue Thumb, uh, to suggest um, for an artist to be featured. Uh, it's the, the curatorial team, they look after that completely. So they are very active on Blue Thumb, but they're very active on seeing who's uploading new artists who needs to be re-featured, who needs to be featured for the first time. Th that whole decision is made by the team here at Blue Thumb. So there's no third party payments, suggestions, nothing is involved whatsoever. Um, one other qu question that comes in even um, for uh, from a regular artist as well is how the site is curated. Um, bottom line is the site is curated to show the best content to the person who's looking at the uh, at the site. What that means is um, obviously uh, if there's a listing which has missing, um, or not missing, but it has minimal amount of detail uh, in description, it doesn't display good photos, it doesn't have enough photos uh, of the actual detail of the artwork, sides and close-ups and all that kind of stuff. If the photos are not of good quality, um, if the sometimes like um, the artist profile itself, the bio doesn't have any, any information. So all that is quite important. So if we do see um, something like an artwork like that, it is unlikely that it makes um, into any of our featured pages, any of, um, any of our promotional uh, platforms, any of our newsletters, it wouldn't do that, especially the photo. And we cannot stress that enough. It's the most important there is if an artwork has um, low quality photos, we can't even use in our newsletters, even if you want to, because we need to have a certain um, quality of image to be for it to be included in our newsletters. Um, so when it comes to curation of the site, the main goal is good content for the collectors. That is the bottom line and everything else leads to it. So if a listing, if an artwork reaches that it, it meets that um, level of quality, it shows up um, in most of the um, platforms. Um, there were a lot of questions around photography, which was from last year, which is fair enough. Our photography has gotten a pretty good boost this year. It's now integrated in the main site and, it, and photographers um, get the same features that artists do and the way it's now set up, um, every upgrade will automatically be applied to photography as well. So there won't be any um, any difference in that kind of thing. Um, there were a lot of questions around the around sort of like personal. Um, I don't know how to put it. Like a lot of artists um, from last year had the question like, Blue Thumb does it, doesn't promote my art personally. Like my art, it, it doesn't. Blue Thumb doesn't have. Um, you know, we don't set aside an art, artist or an artwork. Uh, to not promote the way the system is built up is so that all of that is done automatically uh, the engagement that we keep coming to uh, pretty much in every article um, is the most important thing um, the way promotion is set up is that when your artwork um, if it reaches that particular quality um, level uh, when it gets engagement people get engaged with it it automatically gets pulled into different feeds of different uh, social media platforms, different advertising platforms, so it gets promoted automatically. It might, and it, it's also curated in a way um, that the same artwork is not being shown to everyone because different people interact with the site differently, that uh, interact with different artworks. So depending on their own history, they see different artworks in either ads or just retargeting um, retargeting posts and stuff like that. Um, so it's not about an individual art or an individual artist. It's about um, overall the way the system is set up. It's, it's, it rewards your engagement with the site. The more regular you are, the more engaged you are with the platform, the more visibility you have. Um, cool, sorry, I'm just going through the list. Um, and just from this feedback, I think I really wanted to take a minute and just say, um, and honestly, like, you know, 
putting aside all the uh, uh, putting aside all the careful words and everything, I just wanted to say honestly that Blue Thumb um, in itself, it's not a product of today. Like it's not it's not finished. It's a product that's being built for the future for tomorrow. Um, it's being built for the last nine years, and it will continue to keep evolving. Uh, in the coming years, it's being tweaked and upgraded um, pretty much every day. Uh, the team here, including the customer service team, the sales team, the support team, the dev team, all of us, we are constantly working with each other to build new features to perfect um, features that we already have to tweak and get them to work at their maximum ca capacity. Um, also, Blue Thumb, and I think this is one of the most important things is that Blue Thumb is built to be scalable. Um, what that really means is that Blue Thumb is not built on a third party software or a third party service. So for example, you, you, you guys might have websites or, or like different platforms uh, are built on WordPress or you know Shopify or Squarespace and all that kind of stuff. So we are not based on any of those. We, we built it from scratch. Um, it's expensive and complex, but the, re the reason we did that is because there's no limit on what we can do and what kind of features we can actually create, which is what we're going for. So it's the possibilities of what kind of features we can actually create is endless. So we can create pretty much any feature, however complex and however customized we want it to be. Um, and this is something that plays very well into what kind of features we are working on now um, because we are moving into uh, user-based and user interaction data-based uh, features. And what, so the content that we show to collectors, it's curated based on their own behavior. It's not live yet, but that's what we are trying to work. Um, the automation of sort of machine learning is the most important thing um, and showing people what they might like is the most important thing in terms of longevity. Um, and that's why um, that's why a lot of things are in motion. Anyway, I won't sidetrack myself. Um, also, just on this part, just wanted to say that um, we, we're, not, we're not scared to try new things, uh, which means that a lot of new ideas flow through the table and we try them. Not all of them work, but we try them all anyway. Uh, because that's the way to actually know what will work and what won't. Um, and as a part of this, and um, as a part of this, you'll see a, a lot of times you'll see small things are not uh, performing the way they're supposed to. You will see something out of place or, you know, small uh, glitch here and there, which is fine. That basically means that we're building something. Um, and as a part of that bigger thing, one of the things is temporarily affected, which is absolutely fine. We have a team, uh, I'm a part of this, and a part of my role is to make sure that these things are noticed. And if they are persisting uh, more than temporarily, then we report it to the team and they get fixed um, permanently. Um, the goal that we have, all of us in mind, is to build Bluetum in a way that it is accessible and an easy tool to use for all of our artists um, easily, uh, save you time, use this tool, use this tool as a platform to just put your art out there and get that kind of exposure that you wouldn't be able to get through just your social media or your personal website. Um, and again, understanding how the engagement retargeting how the promotions and marketing works is really important i know it's complicated and i know it takes time but please it, it is really important for you to understand how that works um and we've done some really good articles in the recent times um and we'll continue to do so in uh to educate how these things work um but anyway just want to take this time to say all these things um your support is obviously always really appreciate it and the team here is always here to support you um we might be a little bit slow in getting back to you but we will always get back to you um in whatever small issue like whatever kind of issues you will have um cool that's the end of my rant about this i will quickly jump back um to the chat and just see if there are any questions uh 
Paul's asking, regarding shipping, will we have to increase our prices to cover it? This inflates the price above a usual platform price. Um, Paul, that's a good point. Um, and different platforms use this part differently. Um, I know that some platforms have no shipping price included whatsoever and artists pay for their own shipping. But what's really important to understand in that model is even though it seems like there's no shipping included um, and they are not, that particular platform is not taking any commission out of it. What really ends up happening is you include your shipping amount that you think will be enough to cover the shipping for this particular artwork into the price of the artwork itself. And then commission also comes out of that. So the total commission ends up becoming the commission on the value of the artwork and the commission on the shipping amount that you thought you are putting in to cover that. Uh, in our model, it might be a little bit complicated. In our model, you know that we only take commission on the price of the artwork that you put in. You know exactly what the shipping amount is gonna be, and there's no commission involved in that. So we are not making money off that. Um, and our commission is pretty clear and straightforward at the time of upload, so you will know how much the commission will be. Uh, so it's just kept separate in that way. And I think it's sustainable, uh, sort of like it's scalable in that way. So it doesn't restrict you in that way where you are, in, if you're sending a big, if you're uploading a bigger piece and you include $200 for shipping in that, 30% of commission is not coming out of that those $200 as well. The way we calculate it, it's just kept separate. Uh, so it's clean in that way. I hope that answers that question. Um, Oh, thanks, Haley. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> um, but please, I, I'm in the mood to answer all the hard questions, so hit me. It's fine. Um, we can keep the compliments um, for when Sarah's online as well. Um, cool. I will move on. Um, keep posting your questions if you have any. I will move on to um, just discuss a few new things that, that are coming up and a few sort of news worthy, not worthy news items uh, for the next um, month or so. So just a quick note that June is going to be a very hectic month um, and why I'll just go through um, those points. So new physical gallery that is really exciting um i know my face doesn't really show excitement really well but i am pretty excited um we have finally gotten a physical space in melbourne which is a gallery front as well as uh, our office it's a it's a neat little pretty little place um in uh in collingwood itself um or richmond I don't know, it falls on the water. Um, but we will give you more details once we, we've moved in and we've set up, which might be in the next month or so, um, which means that a lot of uh, movement will happen in June. I'm personally away from tomorrow uh, for about three weeks. Um, Sarah and Alex are in Perth this week and June, a few of our team members are away as well. So there might be a little bit of delay in hearing from us um until at least the 20th of june um but you know that's just a heads up um and because we're moving uh, we would love we still have a lot of um packaging supplies we have boxes we've got tapes we've got stickers we've got uh, some paint supplies so we've got some oil and acrylic paints and we would love to hold um sort of like a studio clearance sale um and from sarah's orders uh, it's going to be uh, next Friday, so not this coming Friday, but next Friday, which is um, the 7th of June. Um, so we'll send out an email to all of you guys uh, who are in uh, Victoria um, with the details. But in a nutshell, um, you can come in to our space um, and you'll have at least 25% off on everything uh, that we have here. So you can take them with you, obviously no shipping costs and all that kind of stuff. 
um, and the tapes and the packing boxes and everything. Uh, I don't know how many we have left, but there's still a bunch. Um, and we'll send you more information uh, on that um, anyway. Um, and that the 25% off goes for um, artists who are not in Melbourne as well. The only thing is that there will be a shipping cost involved in that, unfortunately, because the boxes are pretty pretty big um, themselves. So we there will be a shipping cost involved. Um, cool. All right, I'll just quickly go through a couple of some new features um, and I will come back to the questions if there are any. Um, Cool. So last, uh, this weekend, some of you already saw a little bit of a sneak peek of something um, new um, that might be coming to your profile. Uh, I will not go into detail. People who've seen it have seen it. Um, that will be a part of um, artist profiles quite soon. What we are doing now, uh, and the reason you saw that uh, for time being, is that we are releasing that as a beta testing um for now for a limited number of uh, users just to make sure that all these come because there's some complicated features some of the features you saw them on your profile but there are also some back-end uh, complicated features and we want to make sure that these are ready um, and working well um, so we've released that to a limited group of people to test it and once everything is done then we we'll announce release and we'll take from that take it from there um, today you would have seen if you would have uh, gone to the checkout page, you would have seen some interesting um, changes there. This is something we are currently testing um, again, uh, testing out um, because just we wanted to see what kind of effect it has on buying behavior. Um, I won't say what it is. Um, just you know, add a few things to cart and go to the checkout and see if you can spot it. Uh, it's interesting, um, but we are not entirely sure of what kind of effect it will actually have. Um, on the buyers. And Sarah's just saying bye. Um, she's leaving for Perth. And she's. Bye. Um, Sarah and Alex are leaving for Perth right now and they're just waving at me. Okay. Um, anyway, come, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, coming back to the new features. Um, so go to, the, go to the checkout and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, feel free to let us know what you think. Uh, we'll be just collecting data at this point to understand how this actually does, if this actually does anything or if it doesn't do anything. Um, the other thing uh, I did want to did want to bring up is the, this the coming two quarters and pretty much the whole next year is going to be the year of trade for Bluetham. Uh, we've been doing really well in getting new clients, new projects, small, big um if you've seen the Just Sold page today, um, you would have noticed something um, that is obviously a part of a trade project as well. Um, and we're building more features, we're building more support uh, support tools for our clients, our interior designers, our architects, our stylists, uh, commercial clients who buy for businesses and all that kind of stuff. So we'll be focusing on this um, in order to bring more projects and get Bluetooth involved into more uh projects frequently and more bigger bigger projects as well um that's a that's our main feature uh, that's our main focus for the the next two quarters and the next year as well um more artist features are on their way as well uh these uh, primarily are promotional tools for you as artists so you can control a lot of things um to give you a glimpse of it and i'm not sure i'm, I'm allowed to do that a uh, glimpse of it is you will be able to generate your own um, unique links uh, for your artworks and you can put different links in different places when you promote your artworks. So you'll be able to see which of those platforms are actually performing for you. So you can actually uh, sort of with that kind of knowledge, you can actually change your promotional, your marketing uh, behavior. Um, there will be more complex tools uh, that, that come along with it. Um, which will be uh, referral tools. There will be um, a few other things um, which, in, which make it easy for you to use Bluetooth's badges into your um, own profile and your own links uh, to give you that boost of confidence for your, uh, for your new um, buyers. Um, 
and we are still working on um, a bit of uh, like integration um, codes that you can actually use your blue thumb artworks um, to simply embed them into different uh, portfolios so you don't have to actually work um, you know different things at different times uh, but those things are in motion and they should be coming out um, soon enough um, and like I said briefly before, we're building more data collection tools, um, data collection for collectors, which helps us record um, how people are actually interacting with the site. Um, it, it allows us to learn their behavior. And by learning from the, their behavior, we can actually develop more tools to proactively answer their questions before they even ask them. Um, that's one of the focuses that we have as well. Um, the new iPhone app for the buyers will be uh, getting released pretty soon. It's getting an update. Unfortunately, we had to rip away the artist features um, from this app because uh, the app itself was getting complicated. So we're gonna, uh, be, right now we're focusing on um, a really light, uh, fully functioning, um, easy to use app for the buyers. And once that project is done, we we'll focus on the artist side of things. Um, the new the follower emails which were uh, they were having some sort of issues um, in the last couple of months that's been fixed and the new follower emails are going out you would have already um, seen them going out um, I just want to take a second and just mention how they all uh, work because I'm pretty sure you guys understand you've already seen those new artworks but different collectors have different um, settings on how often they receive those emails. So say, for example, I follow 100 different artists and I, uh, I've i said that I want one email weekly. So what that means is when I get an email, I will see uh, 12 odd artworks at the top um, based on popularity. And then I, have, I will have the option to click and see all the artworks that have been uploaded in the last week from 100 artists that I follow. Uh, and so they will all be collated in one uh, email. An individual collector will not get 100 different emails from 100 different artists if that person follow them like differently. So it's it's all always collated um, to improve the user behavior so they don't get spammed by multiple emails over the week. Um, this tool is really handy and I'm sure you guys already do this but focus on asking people to follow you. Um, not just so that they can get an email, but also because it keeps that cycle of engagement going. They've seen your artwork once, they go to your profile, they follow you. Maybe they don't come back for a week to your profile, but when you upload an artwork, they receive an email, they click on it, they come back and they see more artwork. If, you, if they do click on your artworks, then we follow them in marketing and show them um, your artworks and other artworks that they've engaged with on different platforms based on their behavior. So that cycle is really important. Uh, it keeps them engaged and keeps them interested. Um, so the following part is obviously really important. Um, cool, and just very quickly, we'll have more information on this um, later this month. Uh, our collector sale uh, will be um, getting planned really soon. Um, this will be a pretty, this will be, a, like we, we've done uh, it in the past. We only do it twice a year, once in January and once in July. Uh, we'll keep it simple and we'll, um, we'll give you more information on this. And just wanted to bring this up to give you an idea that there will be uh, a collector sale and keep some stock of artworks for the collectors that will be coming in um, to take advantage of this. Uh, in terms of what they will receive, what offers they, oh, I just wanted to highlight that this is gonna be a repeat buyer sale. So we never advertise to people who are just browsing or we never advertise uh, discount codes on social media. We never discount, uh, we never put discount codes on, uh, you know, like our open newsletters, things like that. We never give openly uh, these discount codes to people who haven't bought with us. Only through these, only through certain promotional tools uh, or like promotional campaigns that we run or twice a year through these sales, we give these particular discount codes to people who've already purchased out on both them. It's a way to reward them, to keep them coming back. Um, so we'll do that. And the amount 
of uh, discounts, whatever that will be. We'll um, send you an email with all the details in there, with dates and everything in there. So if there are any questions, you can reply at that point in time. Um, cool. Yeah, I'll go back and just check the questions if there are any. That's the end of all my points, and I've done really well to keep it in mm -hmm. under 40 minutes, which is quite nice. Oh, oh, and you made it. Good on you. Did, I hope someone called you or texted you. That would have been funny. Um, okay, I'll answer questions now. Um, Jacqueline Stevens, when is asking, when we are asked to quote for, for painting a commission, do we include blue thumbs card and shipping costs too? Um, yes, um, it's a good question. It comes up quite often. And I think um, uh, I'll just quickly answer it. Uh, yes, you should. Um, when you quote for a piece that is being asked to be commissioned, the best way to calculate all the costs is to upload a piece to go through the process of uploading an artwork and putting all the all the details of how this artwork is going to be, um, size, you know, collections, uh, postage, and all that kind of stuff. What that does is it will show you exactly the breakdown of how much the shipping is going to be and how much the payout is going to be, how much the total display price is going to be. The reason why that's important is because commissions, uh, when they're completed, they also are uh, uploaded on Bluetham and put through as a normal sale. Um, so that we can look after shipping and all that if that's included. Uh, so it just sorts that out. So when you commit, when you're quoting something, if you off the top of your head, if you know how the shipping works and how much the commission and everything will be, that's good. If not, just try and upload a piece with the same values, and you can actually get the final price, which will be accurate. That's how we do it most of the times. Uh, Jen, Jen Shuring, great to hear you have total control of your website. Oh, thanks. Um, Paul saying, thanks, Raz, but I'm referring to gallery situations. No oh, okay. I got you, Paul. Sorry. Uh, Stephanie's asking, when I Google my name, Stephanie Lane, Blue Thumb comes up first, which is good, but when I click on the link, I'm taken to Blue Thumb main page and not my own profile. Uh, I'm just going to quickly check on that story. Bear with me. Um, I'll share you, I'll share a screenshot. I think with Google, um, I'll share it with you personally, Steph. Um, your website's coming up for me first, uh, and I don't see ads, um, at all. Uh, I only see them at the bottom. Um, so it, Google does that differently for different users based on their history. So if you're using, uh, pretty much any, any browser, it uses, um, your past history to show you different things. Um, but I will check on a couple of different ones and I'll get back to you on that one. Um, uh, Donna Park is asking, when will we be able to see which artwork has been added to cart so we can promote more to get them moving with sale, please? Um, Donna, that tool's being built. Uh, it's actually, in a way, already been built where we are testing it extensively to make sure that actually um, has no uh, glitches. Uh, every tool that we build, it goes through a few testing, different testing process. And because the nature of the site is really based on user behavior, it's really difficult for us to test that on um, uh, dummy uh, environments. So it's being tested now. Once it's done, uh, it will go through and be available for you, but I'm not entirely sure and I won't be able to give you a time frame for that. Uh, it might be in the next month. It might be in the next two months. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Haley's asking, will artists from other states be included in the physical gallery? Um, Haley, uh, I will leave that question to Sarah and Alex. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the plan of the actual gallery and the curation will be. Um, I we'll leave that to San Alex um, and they should be able to answer that question. I have a feeling you'll be able to talk to them before I do. Um, Jillian. Okay, Jillian's addressing Steph's question. Um, Steph, I'll address your question separately as well. Um, 
cool. Jillian saying, Shiraz graphs don't show past history, can't check past, it just rolls the time thingy, never no, never shows, it's not going to be fixed, thanks. Uh, if you're talking about from um, the data from before, from memory, it was September last year, uh, it hasn't been um, put back in your dashboards yet. That is a huge project that's just waiting to happen. Once that's done, you'll be able to see past that as well. Um, <laughs> it's lovely to see a lot of you actually message on and on if you received a lot of text, I'm sorry. Um, So a lot of, thanks for a lot of you for jumping on and um, trying to answer Stephanie's question. That's really handy. Um, uh, Donna Parker saying, it will be good if every month a gallery shows work from different states. That is a fantastic idea. Um, I will pass that along to Sarah because she's the curator um, and she will have the answer to that question. Uh, okay, um, Deborah and Robin are saying that they can only see a week on the graph. Um, I will take a look at that right after this webinar and I will get back to you guys individually if that's okay. And if that's happening for everyone, then we'll just put a fix on that. Um, or the other thing with the dashboard. Sometimes you've seen, you would have seen that you go to an artist profile and you will see um, that everything loads and then the data details are, and the data is zero, zero, zero. And then it takes like two or three seconds and it, then, then it loads. The reason why that's happened and we've done that quite re uh, recently is that we are not showing people static data anymore. That mean, what that means is we, we are not storing data in one place. And then when someone's looking at a profile, we are fetching the data from here. That's not, so what we are doing now is we are fetching the data directly from our analytical server. What that means is when I'm browsing through um, and I'm clicking on some profiles or whatever I'm doing, um, our analytical server is a live thing that keeps a track of the whole thing. And when you see the data uh, on any of the profiles, it's constantly being pulled in from that server directly. So there's no third party. And that's why sometimes it takes a few seconds for it to load, um, depending on the speed of the internet that you're using, or sometimes if the analytical server is on a heavy load, like for example, a, a newsletter has just gone out, then th that would mean that, you know, hundreds of people are gonna be on the site at the same time. So it sometimes takes a few seconds. Same goes, for your dashboards. So the dashboard data you see, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to load. That is because it's not pulling the data from, um, from a particular uh, database unit where we already store it. It's pulling it out directly from the dynamic uh, analytical server. So sometimes it does take time. Um, it is like, in relation to all the points that I've said, it is done, uh, it's been done to, uh, to make sure that all of the things are dynamic and everything is linked. So if you make one change, it is related to all the other ones automatically and we don't have to do it manually. That's that's like the long-term um, scalability idea that we've used in this as well. But as a side effect, it does happen that if we've changed something in the server, there's you know a tiny bit of things here and that data is not being relayed um, directly. That's why sometimes these things can happen. Um, like, for example, I'm not entirely sure uh, if it's happening for everyone, but um, if the data is not being loaded, be, not being loaded for the last week or beyond that, it just might be because of that. And that's not, so it doesn't mean that the, that the data is not being stored. It just, that means that either it's not being it loaded on your profile at the moment, or it, there's just like a tiny bit of a glitch. 
So that's not a huge thing, but I'll look into it straight away. Uh, what Robin's saying, it takes up to two minutes for a week's worth for longer periods and it just hangs. Um, Robin, try using on your mobile. Um, if you're already using on your mobile, try using on a computer just to see if there's different timing. Sometimes it, just based on the speed of things, it might take different loading times. We've tried to make everything, um, we've tried to automate everything. Um, it's a risky thing to do. It's a tricky thing to do and it's a complicated thing to do, but it's the right thing to do in the long term. Um, and it's an important thing to do as well. Um, so that when everything is linked dynamically to everything else, it makes it um, easier um, for when we make a change to one thing, it gets related to other things automatically. Okay, um, cool. I will leave you guys here. I've pretty much answered all the questions here. If I've missed any, I will go through it later and I'll address them again. Um, but thank you for jumping on and thank you for bearing with just me uh, today. Um, it's lovely to be able to be here and address you and answer your questions directly. It's so much easier than emailing. Um, be, I will be away from tomorrow uh, and I'm back end of June, but uh, we'll be here um, for the next webinar uh, and we'll send you details on a couple of things that are coming up in this coming week. All right, I'll sign off from here. Um, bye guys. This might take a second, so bye.